Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. In a world where everyone says hello, they dare to say, Yeah, yeah good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yes. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Yeah, good day. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah good day. Hey, yeah. yeah, good day. Yeah, good day, Tim. Yeah, good day, Leon. Yeah, good day, everyone. Yeah, good day, everyone. Oh, you know, it feels like it's been a while. I would say it feels like it's been seven days, Tim. Yes. Uh, let me th- one, two, followed by. Yeah, no, I, let's let's just say seven, because I can't go go past that. It's really quite hard, uh, Tim and I living in the same house. We don't talk to each other in between the show, otherwise what would we talk about on the show? Yeah. Um, so it's just, you know, we pass each other uh, going up the um, the Von Trapp family staircase, and it's just kind of, you know, a bit of a, not even really a nod, just a bit of a, a yeah. pat on the arm, I think, is what we usually give each other as we walk past. We live the lives of monks. Um Unintentionally <laughs> celibate monks. <laughs> 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 oh! Um... <laughs> Yeah, and we we do a lot of we do a lot of um, praying. Tim, as with most weeks, I have a problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, at least one that I want to talk about on the podcast for everyone to hear. Yeah, sure. We're going to shit um, your dirty laundry on. Tim, I am in need of an animal. Mm. That's the first part of the problem. I need an animal. We need an animal. I need one. Yeah, need one. Um, and this animal. Yeah. I want it to be a bird. Okay. I want it to be a bird, because I like birds. Big fan of birds. Fair enough. Some people like birds. Khaleesi likes birds. I like birds. It's in, it runs in the family. Yeah. Um, Elise is indifferent. She actually doesn't like them that much. <laughs> um, now, I want a bird, Tim, but I don't want it to fly. A non-flying bird. Right. Some would say a flightless bird, because that... I think is that's hard to keep tra- you know tabs on. Like then I've got to put it on a leash and it could fly up into the tree and... Yeah, you right. You've got to get the cat up there to get it down in the... Fu- anyway... And Tim, the last thing, um, now this is where it gets, hopefully there's no police or any kind of federal agents listening. I want it to be able to kill things. Right. So you, you want a, a flightless bird that is a danger. Mm, I want it, lives I want in it, the danger zone. I, yeah. I, I want to page Dr. Kenny Loggins because yeah. <laughs> I need <laughs> yeah. a danger zone yeah. flightless bird. Tim, right. I feel like if anyone's going to help me, and with their vast knowledge of birds, especially, yeah. it's going to be you. <laughs> they call me the bird knowledge man. <laughs> it's not a it's not a nice sounding nickname, but it's it's reasonably effective in describing where I'm at with my bird knowledge. Mm. No, uh, yeah, no, there is a bird that fulfills all of those requirements. Shock horror. Shock horror. Yeah, I know. Otherwise, we'd be okay. Well, thanks to Curtis <laughs> yeah. and uh, Taylor. And, no. <laughs> We're going to go try and find a bird. <laughs> yeah. No, there is a bird. Uh, have you heard of? Our Lord and Saviour, the cassowary. <gasps> the cassowary. The cassowary. How could I possibly forget that magical bird? Yeah, we have mentioned it on the show a few times, but this is the show where we talk about it in detail. Cassowaries, Tim. Well, this is very exciting. It's very exciting. I am um, I am very excited about the cassowary lately, and we're going to find out the reasons why very soon. Oh, yeah. My advice with this episode is don't strap yourself in because you might need to turn around and run like a motherfucker yeah. from this cassowary. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get into the Let's bare be bones stationary. of it all. Tim, tell me about the cassowary. Well, the cassowary is a flightless bird in the genus Cassuarius, native to the tropical forests of New Guinea. That's Papua New Guinea in Indonesia mm. and nearby islands and also... Northeastern Australia. Oh, mm, yeah, we've got some. We do. Um, there's three extant species. Um, most common of these is a southern cassowary, which is the one we have. Yes. Um, which is actually the third tallest and second heaviest living bird. Um, it's How smaller. Tall? I'm getting to it. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I got excited. I'm getting excited. It's smaller only than the ostrich and the emu. Right. Um, the females are bigger than right. the males, mm. more brightly coloured. Um, so adult southern cassowaries are between one and a half to one point eight meters tall. For people playing in the US of A and haven't caught up with the rest of the world, that's four point nine to five point nine feet tall. Fuck, that's like it's a big and females. Some females get up to almost two meters, which is, is about six point six foot. Wait, two meters is six point six. About that, is I don't it? know. I'm 
look, yeah. I'm not doing the calculations hey, myself. Hey, um, hey, America, I was going to say rest of the world, but it's just you guys. Metric system. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. It makes it a um, lot more, a lot easier. No, that's yeah, fucked. They're, they're big, big birds, and they can weigh up to 58.5 kilos. I know human beings that weigh less than that. Full, like full grown adult human beings that lay less than. Yeah, unfortunately, I am. I'm I'm smaller than a cassowary, but I weigh more than them. Um, 100, 129 <laughs> pound for the for the, our American listeners. Um, That's yeah, a big bird. It's a big bird, but like I said, it's still not as big as an emu or an ostrich. Ostrich True. will never cover because they're not Australian. Eventually, we will cover emus in depth. True. They are a bigger bird, a lot less aggressive. We'll get to that though. Not as deadly. So here's the thing about cassowaries, though, mm-hmm. right? Cassowaries feed mainly on fruit. Okay. But they are omnivorous, which means apart from eating fruit, they also eat other uh, plants, shoots, and grass seeds and stuff like that. They like fungi. They're a mm. fan of the mushroom, mm. uh, invertebrates, so bugs of and that things of that nature. And, and lawyers, small, huh? Yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. That's uh, what and there. small invertebrates. So I'm talking uh, marsupial, mice, possums. Oh Jesus! Things of that nature. Yeah. No, they've got the taste of flesh <laughs> when they get the taste of blood in them. Now, cassowaries are very shy. Very shy creatures. Oh, bless. But if you provoke them, they are capable of inflicting injuries. Occasionally fatal. Specifically, most of the stories involved uh, revolve around dogs and people oh. being uh, either quite hurt or killed, or killed as a result of being, <laughs> being quite, quite hurt. hurt. <laughs> yeah. There's a scale. You're either yeah. when you meet a cassowary, you're either quite hurt, dead, or in the middle is you're quite hurt and you're soon to die, <laughs> and you're going to die pretty soon. Yeah, <laughs> there's no there's no other yeah. middle ground. So they're their feet have three toes. Okay. The two outside ones are kind of smaller, and the middle one is kind of... It's like a thick chode of a toe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, God, we need to make a bird. All right. Yeah. I want it to have, like, two th- two toes, and then just a dick in the middle, <laughs> yeah. but with a sharp it's claw a, on the end. Yeah, <laughs> and they've got very sharp claws. So the second toe, the inner, the middle one, has a dagger-like claw that can be up to 125 millimeters. That's um, 12.5 centimeters. Holy shit. Or five inches... Which is I even I know how long five inches. That's fucking long, um, long. And that claw is basically when they kick, that that bitch comes out and just <laughs> slices. Um, and they've got e- extremely powerful legs. Um, so okay, to give an indication of how powerful their legs are, just running, they can run up to fifty kilometers an hour. That's thirty-one miles an hour. Jesus. Through a dense forest. This is not even like on a plane. This is like in the <laughs> if forest. If you put them on a 100 meter racetrack, that's yeah. a whole other story. And they can jump up to one and a half meters high. That's 4.9 feet. That's, if we're going off their height, we said before, that's like two thirds of their height. They can These just guys jump. could jump and like roundhouse kick me in the throat. Yeah, they probably would too. And they would. Yeah. And here's the next most fucked up thing about them is... Oh, yeah, you're in the dense forest. They're chasing you at 50 kilometers an hour. You see a river. You're going to like, oh, I'll get in the river. I'll get in the river. I'll yeah, cross yeah. the river. Yeah. River's They're incredibly from... good swimmers. Incredibly shit. good swimmers. <laughs> They're so... They don't give a shit so much. They'll cross wide rivers. They'll even go swimming in the sea. They'll go out into the ocean. <laughs> just so they can fight a shark. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, hey, I'm going to fucking yeah. fight a shark. Um, go do it, Craig. You won't do it, Craig. I'll fight a shark. I'll yeah. kill him. Now, all three of the species um, have a keratinous, um, keratin being the stuff that's uh, rhino horns are made out of, and um, yeah, fingernails, um, skin-covered cask. Don't mm. know exactly what that means. Basically, it's like a, they've got kind of like a horn on their a head. A horny helmet thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's also like a blade. Uh, yeah, sort it's of. It's a sharpened helmet. Yeah. Um, it's up to about 18 centimeters, 7, 7.1 inches um, high it can and it grows throughout their life. Oh. Um, they don't 100 percent know what it's for because it's like it's very solid, but it's also semi um, hollow. Also, oh. so they think it might have some kind of acoustic properties involved. Well, look, but they then... are brilliant recording artists. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah, the acoustics in this cassowary are incredible. <laughs> <laughs> But they think maybe also it has um, some kind of sexual capacity. It may, Ooh. obviously, being a massive horn like fuck off thing on their head, it's possibly also something to do with defense. But they're not a hundred percent sure. But the most likely, they seem to think it maybe it's got something to do with acoustics. I um, heard it was good. It's the reason they have it is to um, 
like so that they can get through the fucking vegetation oh, yeah. and shit. Yeah. So they can Similar just run. to the defense. They can just leg it at 50k through deep vegetation and just be like, I don't care. I'm just yeah. going to slice through it with my head. Pretty much. Um, so we were talking about this before. So the average lifespan of a cassowary in, uh, in a zoo or in captivity, captivity of some, sign, of some, some description, kind. usually about 40 to 50 years. And they estimate in the wild it's probably around like 19, yeah. you were saying. Mm, I think so. Yeah. But then I also read that in out of captivity it could be up to 40 50 years i guess it depends on how many cassowaries they come across that they have to kill because like you don't just see another cassowary and walk away like you yeah take it down absolutely um so they're solitary birds except during courtship so they'll stick to themselves mostly mm. they're grumpy they're grumpy people they I, are. i'm with them on that i'm a oh, yeah. largely uh solitary man myself except during courtship and the horn on your head is yeah quite luscious it's getting quite big um so, a male cassowary defends a territory of about seven kilometers squared, about 1,700 acres. That's a I lot think of... acres translates to both, right? Um, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. America, what do you measure shit in? <laughs> yeah, they do. Hands. They measure it in hands and apples. <laughs> yeah. It's I about don't know. a million apples wide. Look, seven, seven kilometers squared is a large area That's for a... one animal to yeah. be territorial about. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a big Do we area. even have enough place in Australia for all the cassowaries to have their own little well, bit of That's what I'm wondering. But apparently, I think they're actually endangered. If they're not endangered, they sure they're on their way to being endangered. Yeah. Um, for itself and its mate. Ma- uh, females don't have their own territories. They kind of go between satellite territories as they mate and stuff like I'm that between territories at the moment yeah 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 um <laughs> thanks for that but yeah um that's pretty much the the lowdown that's the hard facts of a cassowary's life that's who they are that's where they've been where are they going well <laughs> <laughs> what's next for the cassowary <laughs> it's already done a lot what's next for it um man that have you have you ever seen a cassowary uh, in the wild I've never seen one in the wild. I would be terrified if I saw one in the wild. I've seen them at zoos. The first time I became aware of what cassowaries even were was at Australia Zoo, actually. Oh, right. Um, because the cage... At, so, like most of the cages at Australia Zoo, you're kind of on a raised platform and you look down and, like, there's a bit of a fence there, but, like, yeah. the animals can't really get you. These had, like, an extended fence that kept going up a bit and then had, like... Like an army compound, it had like the the um the, the wire, wire going the, in the going in to, to like cover it in. so it couldn't get up and over the fence because yeah, like they can jump one point five meters in the air. So of course these crazy motherfuckers. It and had, it was like, do not put your hands inside this. Yeah. They had barbed wire, um, eighteen inch bulletproof glass. Yeah, uh, and they had a man with a sniper rifle ready at all times. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. But yeah. that's where I became uh, aware of them. Have you ever seen? I've never seen one in the wild. I hear if you see a cassowary in the wild, it's too late. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. That's the end. Although then I was talking to someone recently, and suppose there's places in Queensland where you can just go and like sit in the rainforest and just watch them go. And I'm like, if you want to die, that's one way to do it. Like, I feel like maybe if they were used to... Because like, emus aren't particularly nice creatures either unless no, they're, they're used to human like there's the one at uh, Taronga Zoo if you go into the animal exhibit at Taronga Zoo there's an yeah, emu there that doesn't give a shit it about doesn't you kill it you, so. let you like touch it and stuff yeah so like I feel like they're probably a similar in that they um they don't mind humans if they spend a lot of time around them but they are shy creatures and very territorial so I don't know if I've I don't know if they have a cassowary at Taronga because I maintain the first time I saw a cassowary was this year or was it the end of last year I went to Melbourne Zoo, and mm. they have uh, um, they have like a, a good little bird aviary, aviary. What the fuck do you call it? I think it's aviary. Yeah. Anyway, they have a bird place, um, and you're walking through there, and you're like on a boardwalk, and down there's all these like these water birds, and like you know like ibis things and stuff like that. And uh, there was like one random zookeeper person standing on the boardwalk. And it was, so number one, I think he could direct us to look at where the cassowary was, which was right beneath us. And I was like, that is a monstrous bird. Yeah. But also I think he was there to immediately call for help when this cassowary decides that he's had enough for the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so... Yeah. All right, we're done. Everyone out, everyone <laughs> yeah. out, everyone out. He's yeah. not happy. As soon as the cassowary just goes, mm, it's like, oh, yep, we got to go. <laughs> go, 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 go. Yeah. Um, so I've seen, and I think they have it at Heelsville as well. And Heelsville, which is the, the, the like native animal sanctuary in... in Melbourne, because um, they just have like fences, 
Yeah. And there's just like, you know, an emu and you're like nose to nose with an emu. And they also growl at you, which is very unsettling. And it was the same. There was like a cassowary that was just right there. And like, again, they had like a taller fence and they had you in it. But I was like, I don't even want to be this close to the guy. Like his little claw could come out and get me. Yeah. Um, but I have been in, um, infatuated with them. Infatuated. I love them. It's, that's a deep love. I want to mate with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would make an unstoppable creature. Um, no, but like, yeah, because I was just, I was like, I think the first time I would have come across a cassowary would have actually been in a yaoi toy. Okay. Yeah. When yaois were originally just in Australia and it was all endangered yeah. Australia. People animals. don't know what yaois are, which is a possibility, I guess. We'll our, do an episode on actual our, yaois. Our mega fans in Japan might not know what they are. They are <laughs> Kinder Surprise, which you might not know what that is. I've just realized. Well, no, they're banned in America. Oh, really? Kinder Surprise. Oh, I yeah, didn't because know that. American children are. Um, choke on they're them? They're so smart, they will choke on them, is the way I'd put it. Oh, okay. We just lost <laughs> all our American listeners. Yeah, there you. they go. Um, um, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, so they're, they're, those. Like Kinder Surprise it's and a, It's like a chocolate thing with a toy inside. A Yowie is a, is a, is a, is a allegedly mythical creature. Um, and this is a very big kind of offshoot. We'll do an episode. On yeah, we'll do an episode on, on actual Yowie. But then they made like a chocolate. Yeah, so it's like a chocolate thing that you eat. They're like, you know, like they're, they're small little things. And then inside is a little package with something in it. And back when we were kids, when they first came out, um, it used to be endangered Australian animals. Yeah, native but, Australian. But they, they probably do know what Yowies are because Yowies were still going in America when we lost them. Because yeah. we stopped having it's them. It's possible. So, yeah, Yowies but were we got there. them back soon. We got um, them back recently. Yeah, and since we've gotten them back, they've been like other countries' endangered animals, which I'm all good with like supporting all the endangered animals, but it's a Yowie, guys. You can't just take over Yowie. Come on. Come on. Anyway, give me a quoll or give I, me nothing. <laughs> give me a quokka or go to hell. <laughs> um, I reckon that would have been the first time I saw a cassowary. They're literal right. dinosaurs as well. We haven't spoken about that. I believe they haven't changed much since Well, yeah, I was looking times. in terms of... Because it's similar for emus and stuff like that. In terms of their like... Um, evolutionary biology they actually don't like it's very difficult for them to trace even where cassowaries have come from mm. um and they kind they might be kind of related to emus but they also might not be but that we listened to the sound before we should edit the sound in let's leave some space in a second no i was, well, I was this, getting pretty good at making the sound, the sound myself just like, <clears throat> yeah it's actually like not that. far off. let's edit the sound in because this sound is fucking terrifying Okay, I guess I just edited the sound in. Good well, job, yeah, Leon. Yeah, good work. Um, no, if you heard that in the forest, yeah, get out. You'd run. Yeah, get out. Leave. That is a velociraptor, <laughs> because like literally, like you were saying, like these things are essentially velociraptors in modern day. Yeah, yeah. It's they're not. Yeah. They're dinosaurs, is the issue here. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> like the issue is we have dinosaurs walking around in Australia that are just ready to go. Um, what I also like is that cassowaries, on the, every time I looked at a top 10 list of world's most dangerous birds, number one was the southern cassowary. Mm. Thank you, Australia. Let Arigato. alone do we have snakes that want to kill you, everything wants to kill you. Even our birds are ready to go. My advice if you come to Australia is just don't go north. Because oh, once Queen's you go north, right. like it's always hot, which means the snakes don't. Um, the snakes hibernate, don't really, really hibernate. You've got crocodiles up there. Yep. Cassowaries. Yep. Jellyfish in the summer. You can't go swimming in summer at the beach because there's way too many jellyfish. Yep. Um, sharks. Blue bottles. Yeah. Box jellyfish. Oh, we already said that. Yeah. Like the insects, spiders, all that so, stuff. Yeah. Just stay south. You know, I was doing some research, and this is another digression about animals. I was doing some research about uh, Darwin the other day because I work with someone from Darwin. Um, and I was like, how many crocodiles are there in Darwin and how many people are in Darwin? So I think the population of Darwin is about 200,000. Yeah. Um, the amount of crocodiles between Darwin and the Mary River, I think it was, which is in like Queensland, right. is 200,000. <laughs> There's enough crocodiles to take over all of Darwin. That's a lot of crocodiles. Oh my yeah, God, that's estimated. so many crocodiles. Anyway, that's too many. So... Um, Tim, I want to keep telling you about the cassowary, but I am feeling quite drained. So I think you mm. and I need to take a bit of a quick break to go have some Vegemite Blend 17. Mm, the fancy. results we will share with you after this short break. So here's the thing, Vegemite. Mm. Here's the thing. Number one, sponsor us. We love you. Number two, Blend 17. Um, this may surprise our fans, Tim. Right. But it tastes like... 
Um, what's the Vegemite? It tastes like Vegemite. <laughs> oh, it's exactly the same. It tastes like Vegemite that cost ah. me seven dollars for a hundred and fifty grams. Yeah, but look at the packaging. Can I, I can buy it. I can buy one drug for cheaper than that, can't I? I'll have one yeah. of your. I'll have a hundred grams of your finest drug, please. Mm. It's it's expensive. Beautiful packaging. I um, didn't. You bought it. I didn't. I haven't even tried it. I did. I but, did. Um, Tim, we just had a break then to have it. Well, you I just, didn't have any. Oh, okay. I'm this not is, hungry. Oh, I see. All right. That's a. Well, that went well, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. Look, so the cassowary, I was doing some uh, reading because, as we all know, in Australia, we have our indigenous... We have books. Uh, yeah. We have books. No, we have our, <laughs> our indigenous Australians that are the original landowners here uh, and have been here right. for, since the beginning. Um, and, and they have, well, they usually have excellent stories about animals. We, we shared a little bit of the story of the platypus. Yeah, um, so their stories, uh, the, the dreaming. Yeah, the dream time stories, um, I think, is just the... General blanket term, which I'm not sure is yeah. what you meant. To it's call. difficult. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, coming up soon, we'll be doing some episodes about indigenous culture because it's not a uniform thing across Australia. They all hmm. there's like over 200 different oh, yeah. tribes it's, over the area of Australia varies. with their own cultures Hugely. and languages and stuff. But generally, in speaking about their stories, it seem usually it's referred to as the dreaming. But anyway, a lot yeah. of them about. Animals, as you were saying. Yeah, they are. So, like, I, I know that, like, probably the more popular one and one that I guess maybe the rest of the world probably does know is the Rainbow Serpent. The Rainbow Serpent's a pretty popular tale that everyone's Yeah, that heard. one seems to be... And even um, in between tribes, I've done a little bit of, obviously, my own research yeah. on spirituality and religion around the world. And the Rainbow Serpent is one that seems to be pretty... Consistent. Consistent across all of Australia. Yeah. A lot of the... I think a lot of... There's, they're, they're obviously, every story is different, but a lot of consistency. Anyway, we digress. Um, but I, I went looking. I, was, I wanted to know what the story of, was, of the cassowary was. Because the cassowary is, as we said, it's, it's very important and it's endangered. The thing about the cassowary, though, that uh, we kind of haven't touched on is that when it poops, it poops out a bunch of seeds and nuts. So the, the cassowary is actually like nature's... Yeah. own little farmer dude it's like, very important to the ecology of the uh of the area of the area like, yeah more so than like any other bird i think it, it does this so by it being in danger blah, blah, blah. so it was very important to the indigenous uh tribes in that area um because it provided them like them with fruit like if it went and ate fruit and then planted fruit there was fruit so the cassowary was a very important animal anyway so the story i was reading i'm not going to read the story because it's a bit long but the story i was reading was about like how it got its its, its helmet and how it became the bird that it is. Oh, cool. So supposedly, the poor cassowary was picked on by all the other animals. So all the other animals lived in the rainforest and were having a great time, but the cassowary was picked on by the other animals because it couldn't fly because it had small wings. Yeah. And so the only animals that like didn't get to hang out with everyone were snakes and the cassowary. So it would like hide away from them, like watch them in the swimming hole, and when they went in, it would go for a swim. Like it was a lone, lonely little dude. Um, and then one day it was, it came like. A lizard spotted it behind the tree and was like, hey, look, it's the flightless bird. Everyone laugh at him. And they all laughed at him. So he ran away. Right. And he ran right into a rock. Oh. And he hit the rock with his head and he split it open. Oh, no. But then he couldn't get a piece of the rock off his head. Oh. And then they laughed and laughed at him more and more anyway. So then he's still doing his hiding out thing. But then he went swimming because like... <laughs> I don't know if this is true. I need to find out this fact, but he says to one of the other animals that he's a good fisherman because he uses his like wings to catch fish. It probably does that. It does everything else. Like, why not? Oh, yeah. I mean, it goes swimming at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to the beach to actively go into the ocean. I can't so wait for David Attenborough to do probably. his special where he's like, the Great Barrier Reef, <laughs> yeah. fish, stingrays, yeah. the cassowary. <laughs> oh, shit. Is that a cassowary? <laughs> Run, run, <laughs> run! Take the boat away and go, 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 go! Um, but so, the, yeah, so the, it's in the, it's in the water, and the the seahawk comes along because the seahawk goes fishing at night for dinner or whatever. And the seahawk's like, "What are you doing in there by yourself?" And he's like, oh, "Everyone bags me out. No one likes me, and so I just do my own thing. Why don't you hate me?" And the seahawk's like, "I believe that all creatures have a place here." And I'm like, "Why is the seahawk the voice of reason?" Oh, they're a wise animal. <laughs> yeah. They're a wise animal. So anyway, it gets to this thing where the the cassowary's camping, you know, on the side of the riverbed. Um, and then he hears all this noise coming from the camp and like screaming and all this stuff. And he's like, it's probably a trick to make me go to the camp so they can laugh at me again. So I'm not going to go there. And then he hears this like weak voice going, help, help. And it's the seahawk. And he's mm. like, what happened? And he's like, the snakes have come and started attacking everyone, but everyone's too afraid to fight it. So I've been fighting it off myself. So the cassowary fucking legs it 50 Ks an hour into the camp, mm. starts ramming, slicing open snakes, killing them all. And then he's like heralded, like lifted up, and it's like you are the 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 leader of the rainforest. You're the you're the, he's the icon. king of the. King so that's of the, the story of the cassowary. Wow, that I found which is quite nice actually. It is beautiful, um, isn't it? 
But I do like this idea of David Attenborough's Great Barrier Reef with the cassowary. That's the <laughs> yeah. main thing that we brought food out of that. Um, but yeah, as I said, it, it plants all the food for, for you know the rainforest in general. So other animals are reliant on it too. Yeah, right. And it's a protector, I guess, because it'll fuck you up if you come into the rainforest. Um, but unfortunately, because of deforestation and the rainforests that are in trouble at the moment anyway, um, the poor cassowary is in trouble as well. Now, let alone does the cassowary just hang out in the rainforest, uh, there's a wonderful article here from The Sun, which is a, a UK um, newspaper. Mm. And the title of this article is The World's Deadliest Bird is Breaking Into People's Homes in Australia. Breaking in. So it seems that the cassowary has learned how to pick locks. <laughs> Fabulous, which means <laughs> which is just one more thing we needed it to learn. Yeah. Now I'm not. I'm, I'm not. The article doesn't say it learned to pick locks, but if the cassowary is getting into the houses, I'm assuming it knows how to pick locks. It can't just smash windows. It's not. It's not an animal. <laughs> yeah. um, oh wait, no. But so it's breaking into people's homes. And suppose now, they, like I think people are probably just coming home. It's just cassowary in the kitchen, just like, hey, it's like, hi, um. Uh, I'll go. That's now, the human yeah. saying, they'll go. The cassowary is like, this is my house now. Now, all I can imagine is the scene out of Jurassic Park where they're in the kitchen and the yeah. velociraptors are coming cassowary. after them. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm picturing like if I came home to a cassowary in the kitchen, it'd be like in The Simpsons with the one we were talking about the other day where it's like, oh, the cats actually legally own this house now. You have <laughs> yeah, to move yeah, out. Yeah. Like, the cassowary legally owns uh, yeah, this house. Yeah. Um, the law of the jungle clearly dictates that once it enters the house, it possesses <laughs> all property within yeah. It's surprising. Uh, seven kilometer People radius. People think the property market in um, far north Queensland is bad. It's just that the cassowaries have a monopoly on it. Oh, yeah. No, they're taking up all the houses. Honestly, it's disgusting. There's nothing left for the rest of us. It needs to be a cassowary tax. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to, to leave you with um, is that when I was um, doing my Google search, as per usual, I come across wonderful people also ask, which are always terribly written. Like, I write terribly on Google. But I feel like Google should take it upon themselves to be like fix the grammar and spelling and stuff like that and mm. when it comes to like recommending things to me. So the number one recommended thing when I searched uh, cassowary facts was can cassowary kill man? Can cassowary the singular kill man? Exactly, that's the thing. The it's singular. By, no, no, see, by saying kill man, oh, to like me mankind. that reads mankind. <laughs> yeah. Like, can one cassowary kill everyone and the answer is yes yes from what i have understood we did the episode on the emu wall yep we are fucking lucky that the cassowaries were not involved if the cassowaries join sides of the emus first of all they'd kill the emus then they'd kill the people (laughs) yeah yeah, no, the cassowary they... wars would be the story where to be like, and that is why Australia has a cassowary as prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, they legally own this country <laughs> now. Once they enter the the uh, Parliament House, they uh, they legally own everything. <laughs> let a cassowary lose in Parliament House and be like, yeah, cassowary for prime minister will be my next campaign. But the answer to that question though is fucking horrific. So um, statistics show that, well, first of all, cassowaries don't attack without a reason. Like first, you got to go, oh, nice helmet, and they'll yeah. fuck you up. Um, but statistics show that most cassowary attacks were actually self-defense. They're quite capable of killing dogs. Now, that's sad. Mm. Um, and if it ended there, that would have been fine. However, they have to go into detail. It's quite capable of killing dogs by gutting them with their sharp claws on their huge feet and have even been rumored to have killed small horses. Small horses. The cassowary's out there fucking kicking ass and taking names, including <laughs> yeah. small horses. Yeah. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Shetland, get out of my way. Yeah. Um, Tim, that's the cassowary. It's a very exciting animal. It is a very exciting. It's a terrifying animal, and I'm so glad that we live literally on the other end of Australia. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's probably an important note. Tourism Queensland and tourism like Northern Territory are never going to sponsor our show because that's where all the dangerous stuff is. Oh, yeah. Melbourne's safe. It's cold. All the hot animals down here are like... Uh, Queensland is beautiful. You've got the Great lovely, Barrier Reef, lovely, gorgeous uh, mountain and, and rainforest areas yep. and animals galore, including the people. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. Um, You're allowed to say that. You live near there. My mum lives, lives near there. there. Um, no, it is gorgeous. But it is also terrifying. It's just awful. Um, Geckos everywhere. No, but you should visit. You should visit. It's beautiful. Deadly. But don't visit too much because the Great Barrier Reef's... Endangered. Anyway, we're getting off track. It is. We've been off track a few times today, but Tim, I feel like the cassowary is a uniting bird. Mm. It brings us all together. Tim, you know what also is uniting? What? Um, no, it didn't actually work, wasn't it? I was going to say letters, um, like as in yeah. written to us. Oh, that was going to be my... Tim, I've got some dad advice. Hey! Dad advice, dad advice, get your dad advice today. Um, yes. It's okay. pretty catchy, I think. I think I'm going to... Anyway, Tim, I've got some dad advice. 
Okay. Well, we've got to give advice to this person. Well, let's listen to the letter. Another electronic letter. Hi, Tim and Leon. G'day. Fair enough. My name is Murray and I'm 13. Murray. First of all, Murray, I want to apologize for the name that you have. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because your parents are mean. Murray's Um, a great name. For a 13-year-old child? Yeah. Maza. Maza. That's what he's called at school for sure. Maza. Maza dog. Um, Maybe not after we read the rest of this. Now that I am in high school, Mm. I wanted to try something different with my hair. Okay. I was sick of getting a short back and sides at the barber with my dad. I'm not talking about hipster barbers. I'm talking about $15 for a haircut and you have to deal with old man nuts grazing your hand for 20 minutes (laughs) as he moves around the chair. Ah, Murray, I feel you. (laughs) Murray's quite funny. Murray's quite funny. (laughs) Murray's uh, Murray's a good good kid. Um, So... I went to the barber and asked him for a, for more of a styled cut. A styled cut, right. Mm. Like maybe leaving a bit on top to be styled and even maybe a bit of length on the sides. You know, like obviously this kid's trying to get like a proper hipster cut from this $15 nut grazing barber. Yeah, right. Initially, it seemed fine. Okay. But then I came home and washed it. I now look like one of the men from ABBA. My okay. hair is completely stuffed and I have to go to school tomorrow. Help, what should I do? How do I make this cool? Okay. Thanks heaps for this podcast. I love it so much and I've been sharing it with my friends in Japan. You should do a tour there soon. Talk soon, (laughs) Murray. (laughs) Cheers, Muzz. Um, Murray, mate, hang Mm. on a second. Mm. Your parents work hard for Mm. that $15 and they're putting that money out so that you can have your hair cut. Otherwise, you're going to be covered in hair, mate. (laughs) You need to be more appreciative. Number two... I did that other one was number one. Didn't I, I didn't preface it with number one, but this one's number two now. That hairstyle number one. <laughs> number one, it's like two I'm point sorry. one. I'm was so confused. Number one, part A of, of the first section. This is part A of number two. <laughs> was very popular, mm. and Abba was very popular. Mm, so yeah. you've got it yourself a popular hairstyle. <laughs> Not only in the 70s and 80s when ABBA was popular, but also now. There's an entire country. It's called North Korea. All of the women have that haircut, and it's incredibly popular. Yeah, you you look it up. I don't know. I'm making things up. You are. Now you're offending North Korea. That's not a safe... That's a bad bet, Tim. Imagine if... It's a bad bet. (laughs) Imagine if someone says something to offend North Korea. Um, (laughs) Look, mate, when it comes down to it, the brass tacks of it all, just cut it yourself. Mmm... Tim, I'm just going to put it out there. I think you've given some bad advice. Um, <laughs> bad advice. <laughs> bad advice will be nice. next. Um, Murray, Muzza. Murray, sit down for a second, mate. Just put your Game Boy down. Put your, well, first of all, where'd you get my Game Boy from? <laughs> now put it down. Um, pick up a normal are gaming you, console. Are you, are you selling that Game Boy? <laughs> They're really expensive. How much are you selling for, What games you got? What <laughs> games you got? You got Mario Kart? I don't want to if you don't got... You got Mario Golf. Now we're talking. Um... Murray, first of all, this story reminds me exactly of something that happened to me when I was growing up, almost as if I wrote the letter myself, which I didn't, but it reminds me of exactly a story that happened to me. You know what I did, Murray? I went to school. It wasn't wasn't nice. It wasn't good. (laughs) I had a bad haircut. I had a lot of hair on the sides and basically a square cut on the front. From old mate at the barber. It was, it was, yeah, it was Lego Man, but with more length on the sides. Fantastic. What I'd do, Murray, is uh, first of all, I'd get you some some extra stronghold wax uh, from the local Coles. You uh, can get that from Coles. I've you seen can, it there. You would. Um, or if you want to go really heavy duty, get the Coles brand gel. <laughs> um, it's clear, uh, and it is, it is. It won't come out until you're about 25. Yeah. Um, Murray, and then what you want to do is you just want to slick it slick it down as hard as you possibly can. Then you want to put a beanie on. On top of the beanie, put a hat on. Mm. And then on top of the hat, uh, a, a paper bag. Yeah. Cut some eye holes out. Um, and that's your look for the next 12 months, my friend, <laughs> yeah. until that hair grows out nice and nice and good. Or, counterpoint... Shave your fucking head, Murray. It's Australia. It's hot, mate. It's coming into summer. We are coming into summer. It's time to shear down, ladies and gentlemen. Shear I'm down. Not, I'm not bloody... I'm not paying for you to just get these haircuts. Willing to shave. I'm going to shave it. I'm going to get Uncle Terry's razor. And we're going to sit out in the backyard and I'm going to shave that hair off. <laughs> Sorry, that was me playing with the, yeah. <laughs> the thing. Very weird noise yeah. just happened. Um, but no, Murray, good on you. And also, thanks for the um, thanks for the Japan plug. It's good of you to do that. It's not yeah, like cheers. we want to go or anything. It's good no, 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 no. We're really, really... 
not busy at all. Um, cool beans, Tim. Well, the cassowary, the Murray, and the Vegemite Blend 17 are all very Australian, and I'm happy to be here in this great southern land. Go by sea. Yeah, I'm, it's pretty good. Um, it's about quite... as patriotic as I've ever been in my entire life. Yeah, definitely. Says the guy that is the co-host of a podcast all about, about Australia. Australia. Hmm. Fabulous. Um, well, yeah, no, stuff. that's that's the cassowary, isn't it? It's it's it is. Uh, if anyone playing at home to spell cassowary, it's C A W S O W A R Y. Cassow array. The last four words is what you should be wary. That would be a really good cassowary ad campaign. Yeah, are you? You should be casso wary of the rainforest. Um, now, how do we get? How do we use the cast? No, stop part? here because otherwise people are going to steal idea, our idea. We'll develop this after. Okay, we just, I'm deleting the episode. No one needs to hear this. Um, yeah, no. So, the, yeah, be wary of the Casso wary. Um, cool. All right, Tim. Well, yeah. this has been fun, mate. It's been nice. It's been uh, all right. I yeah. really enjoyed it. It's great to look at you for. How I'm long so long hungry. Long. Oh my goodness. Sounds about right. Let's go eat something, Tim. As always. Mm. I want to thank Fern Tree Mu- Music, Curtis <laughs> yeah, Finance, yeah. for doing our introduction and our outroduction. He's a great guy and I've known him since high school. Yeah, and just like every week, I'd like to thank <laughs> Taylor Smell, T Smell, Smelly T for, for our artwork. I don't know why this is so funny. <laughs> People who listen to our episodes know that this is not the way we usually do things. No. Um, <clears throat> for our artwork, it's, uh, it's, it's a good likeness of the two of us. Fuck, I wish I looked like the artwork. Yeah. I look so good in it's the definitely, artwork. It's definitely an improvement on my face, so thank you for that. If only my hair could look like that. Murray, I'll sh- when I learn- Here's the thing about Murray's <laughs> question. You know how old I am? 25. You know what I just worked out? How to do my hair the way I need to do it. Oh, it's I taken me 25 it. years. I still haven't got it. Look, uh, also follow us on the social medias. Mm. Uh, at Yeah G'day Podcast. Yes. Pretty much everything. Twitter, Instagram, and uh, which is different Instagram, and uh, Facebook. Also, send us an email at Podcast at gmail.com or by using the contact section on www.yeargaday.com. You can write your own letter in. You can wow. get your letter read out on the show. Now, as we've said, make sure you take a picture of it. We can't send it back to you. Yeah. Um, and we won't, is more the fact, because Australia Post is not quick. No. Um, uh, and uh, check out the other stuff on Ozcast Network. Yes, bad cast. Some bloody gems on Once there, Once upon a there. tangent. Uh, is this movie for you? One newsman and a web guy. Yeah. That's all I can remember right now. No, it's all good stuff. It's it all is all good stuff. stuff. Um, brilliant. Tim? Mm. I just want to say this from the bottom of my heart. Mm. Yeah, g'day, Tim. Yeah, g'day, Leon. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Catch you on the flippity flop. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details.